Hello everyone, welcome to video number one for chapter five. The topic for this chapter is sensitivity analysis. Let's get started. So subchapter 5.1. In this subchapter, we'll go through several examples demonstrating sensitivity analysis and, and various aspects of that. Okay, so let's look at our first example. Let's consider the blending problem of uh, feeding um, the stock, let's say, feeding the cows. So we're giving the information in a following table. So on the market, there are two types of feeds, feed one and feed two. And uh, we consider two types of nutrients, A and B. Okay, And uh, for feed one, one unit of feed one has 10 units of nutrients A, 3 units of nutrients B, and it costs 16 cents. And then for feed 2, the correspond nutrients and its cost. And at the same time, there is a minimum daily value for um, each nutrient that must be met. Okay, so we are very familiar with such a setting. So to set up a problem, we define the variables x1 and x2 x1, x2 will be the amount of feed 1 and 2 to use daily, respectively. That's why I put x1 here, x2 here. The objective is to minimize the cost. And the cost would be 16 times x1 plus 14 times x2. And then you have the um, minimum for daily nutrients value. So 10 and 4 dot x1, x2 shall be bigger than 124. And the, so here, the same thing, 3x1, 5x2, add up to be bigger than 60. Okay. Okay, and x1, x2 are restricted. And sorry, there shall be no x3 here. Now, since this is a problem with only two variables, let's try to solve it with the graphic method. Okay, so um, we're going to define three lines. Um, L1 is the first constraint when it's met with equal signs, so the boundary of the feasible region. So it's a straight line, call it L1, it's in red, and uh, you can easily find the intercept with the two axes, and then you can draw a straight line, so that's the red line. And the blue one, L2, here is the constraint for nutrients B. And uh, it's, again, a straight line. You can find the two intercepts and then connect it and then draw a line. And then you know the feasible region is the region that's above both of these lines in first quadrant. So it's this um, shaded gray area. Okay. And the third line is the line for the um, objective function. So the objective function is z equal that. Let's assign a number in, a, in so to see what that is. So this number is exactly um, 16 times 14, actually. And, uh, and then I know that that's a straight line. So along this straight line, um, the cost is constant. And uh, along all lines parallel to this one, the cost is also constant. And then we also see that in the direction when you go upwards, where this arrow is pointing, the cost is increasing. Calculator.
Okay, um, there is a mistake of what I said. Um, 112 is actually 16 times 14 divided by 2. Okay, but it doesn't matter. It's just a number. What is important is uh, the actually the slope of this line. We'll talk about that later. Okay, so let's take a look at um, the slope of these three lines. Um, so um, for the red line, what is the slope? Well, it's exactly the ratio of the two coefficients and then taking with a negative sign, right? Because we see that they're all going down. And then so it's negative 10 over 4, which is 5 over 2, which is 2.5. And for the blue line here is the ratio is negative 3 over 5 is negative 0.6. And then for the green one, the, the L3 here, we call this S3, is negative 16 over 14 and the negative 8 over 7. Okay, sorry, there should be a negative sign here. So what are the relations between the three um, slopes? Now, first we see that between L1 and L2, the, the red and the blue line, we see that the slope of the red one is less than the slope of the blue one. So S1 is strictly less than S2. And uh, for the green line that we have here with the constant K, any constant on the right-hand side, and this slope here actually lies between S1 and S2, okay? So it's a slope demonst as demonstrated and, they, and then you see that if this slope, S3, is between S1 and S2, any value between, then as you move up and down, the P2 will be the vertex that you touch first, and it will be the optimal point. Okay, so um, I think um, most of the discussion here is shall be familiar to us, and... Uh, then what's interesting is um, several questions we're going to ask now. Okay, so first question. Now let's suppose the costs of the two feet could vary. How would this affect the minimum or the solution of our problem? Okay, let's try to analyze the situation. Let's put two um, letters, C1 and C2, to be the prizes for feet 1 and 2, respectively. Okay, and with this in here, then we have the objective function now becomes C1x1 plus C2x2. And that's what we want to minimize. And let's look at the slope for the, the third line, which is the above equation with a constant on the right-hand side, it will be the ratio between the two prices. So it's negative C1 over C2. Okay, so now let's go back to the graph there. We see that um, the slope of L3, if it varies, and there are different possibilities and depending on its relation with the slope of the L1 and L2, okay? So um, there are three um, possible situations. So let's look at those three. So first one, let's say um, the slope of the green one is even smaller 
than the red one. So it will be this line here. S3 is less than S1. It's even more steeper going down. Then as you move it, the first vertex point you're going to touch is P1. And that will be the minimum. So that's this situation. And the second situation is, um, let's say, if S3 is um, bigger than S2. So the that this one line here, that's your S3, the slope is bigger than this one. So less steep than the line O2. And then, you know, as you move this in the parallel way up and down, you will touch P3 first. And then that becomes your optimal point. And the final case is S3 lies between S1 and S2. And then that was like the situation we talked about. So let's like this one. And if you move it up, then you will touch at P2. And then P2 is the optimal point. Okay. So which point of the vertex becomes the optimal now depends on the relationship between the slopes. If S1 and S2, the feasible region, is fixed, then it depends only on the slope of this uh, objective function. Okay, so um, let's summarize and put in the numbers. What will be the minimum daily cost? Okay, three situations. It will be the Z value at P1, which is 31 times C2. And if... Um, um, our S3 is uh, less than um, S1. So if we put it in, we see that there are two negative signs. So we can multiply both sides by a negative sign and actually have this relation. So this is a, a constraint on the ratio C1 over C2. Okay. Okay. The second case, the optimal, uh, the minimum is obtained at P2. Then it's 10 C1 plus 6 C2. And uh, this is the case where this ratio is between those two. And then the last one is at P3, that's 20 C1, and that's the ratio is less than 3 over 5. Okay, so we see that if you are given to me any prices C1 and C2, we could find the minimum cost and the minimum solution. It's listed all here. And we also further observe that the result here depends only on the ratio C1 over C2. You see, they only all appear together. That's the optimal point. But the minimum value would depend on the actual value C1 and C2 here. Okay, so um, that is the first question we asked for this example. In the next video, we'll ask another question. So... Hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you next time.